Hello and welcome to this uh, continuing first look exploring session looking at the enervatingly titled How a Man May Choose a Good Wife from a Bad. Uh, so far, the title of the play has, uh, has um, yeah, uh, ha has, has so far not been fully expl explicated, but um, it certainly did set up some of the more problematic elements of the text, um, though the text itself uh, does at least acknowledge that some of the problematic elements of the text are art holes. So uh, we're going to be seeing where, uh, where that leads uh, as we go into Act 2, Scene 3, and uh, whether the play manages to be as advertised, or at least for a modern <clears throat> audience, uh, a, a pleasant, conceited comedy, or just conceited. We shall see. Um, today, uh, reading uh, Arthur and Old Arthur, so two generations of Arthurs, is... My name is Alexandra, and I am my own grandpa. <laughs> uh, reading uh, the schoolmaster Aminadab and Hugh is... A leaky chapel in northern England. Uh, reading Mary Fuller and Old Lusum is... Bryony Sparrow in Lincolnshire. Uh, reading Mistress Arthur today is... Lynn Freitist in the Northwestern United States. Reading Bravo, uh, Pipkin and Justice is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth Amisu, I'm an, and I'm an author based in the southeast of England. And reading Splay, Anselm and a Maid is... Alan, based in Suffolk. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be reading stage directions. I may leap in if some of, there's a bit of clashing. We haven't got a vast room for the play. So some people may occasionally talk to themselves if it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Then I'll nab apart from somebody. Uh, but hopefully that won't have to happen. Uh, Act 2, Scene 3. We're meeting a load of new characters we haven't met before. Enter Mistress Mary, Mistress Splay and Brabo. I prithee, tell me, Brabo, what planet thinkst thou governed at my conception that i live thus openly to the world two planets reigned at once venus that's you and mars that's i were in conjunction pretty pretty your face that conjugation copulative is that part of speech that i live by ah ah to see the world we swaggerers that live by oaths and big mouthed menaces are now reputed for the tallest men. He that hath now a black mustachio reaching from ear to ear or turning up puncto reverso, bristling towards the eye. He that can hang two handsome tools at his side, go in disguised attire, wear iron enough, is held a tall man and a soldier. He that with the great with greatest grace can swear gog sounds, or in a tavern make a drunken fray, can cheat at dice, swagger in bawdy houses, wear velvet on his face, and with a grace can face it out with, as I am a soldier. He that can clap his sword upon the board, he's a brave man, and such a man am I. She that with kisses can both kill and cure, that lives by love, that swears by nothing else but by a kiss, which is no common oath, that lives by lying and yet oft tells truth, that takes most pleasure when she takes most pain. She's a good wench, my boy, and so am I. She that is past it, praise for them that may, is an old board as you are, Mistress Splay. Oh, do not name that name. Do you not know that I could ne'er endure to hear that name? But if your man would leave us, I would read the lesson that last night I promised you. I prithee, leave us. We would be alone. And will and must. If you bid me be gone, I will withdraw. And draw on any he that in the world's wide round dare cope with me. Mistress, farewell. To none I never speak so kind a word. My salutations are farewell and be hanged or in the devil's name. What they have been, my many phrase can tell. You cannot fight, therefore to you, farewell. Exit Brabo. Oh, this same swaggerer is the bulwark of my reputation. But, Mistress Splay, now to your lecture that you promised me. <clears throat> Daughter, attend, for I will tell thee now. 
what in my young days I myself have tried. Be ruled by me, and I will make thee rich. You, God be praised, are fair, and as they say, full of good parts. You've often been, been often tried to be a woman of good carriage, which in my mind is very commendable. It is indeed. Forward, good mother's play. And, as I told you, being fair, I wish, sweet daughter, you were as fortunate. When any suitor comes to ask thy love, look not into his words, but into his sleeve. Thou canst learn what language his purse speaks. Be ruled by that. That's golden eloquence. Money can make a slave when tongue speak plain. If he that loves thee be deformed and rich, accept his love. Gold hides deformity. Gold can make limping Vulcan walk upright, make squint eyes straight, a crabbed face look smooth, gild copper noses make them look like gold, pills ages wrinkles up, and makes a face as old as Nestor's look as young as Cupid's. If thou wilt arm thyself against all shifts, regard all men according to their gifts. This, if thou practice, Thou, when I am dead, would say, O oh, mother splay, soft lie thy head. Enter young Master Arthur. Soft, who comes here? Be gone, good mistress splay. Of thy rules practice, this is my first day. God, for thy passion, what a beast am I! To scare the bird, and to the net would fly. Exit splay. By your leave, mistress. What to do, master? To give me leave to love you. I had rather afford you some love to leave me. I would you would as soon love me as I could leave you. I pray you, what are you, sir? A man, I'll assure you. How should I know that? Try me, by my word, for I say I am a man, or by my deed, I'll prove myself a man. Are you not Master Arthur? Not Master Arthur, but Arthur, and your servant, sweet Mistress Mary. Not Mistress Mary, but Mary, and your handmaid, sweet Master Arthur. That I love you, let my face tell you. That I love you more than ordinarily, let this kiss testify. And that I love you fervently and entirely. Ask this gift and see what it will answer you, myself, my purse and all, being wholly at your service. That I take your love in good part, my thanks shall speak for me. That I am pleased with your kiss, this interest of another shall certify you. And that I accept your gift, my prostrate service and myself shall witness me, witness with me. My love, my lips, my and sweet self are at your service. Will it please you to come near, sir? Oh, that my wife were dead. Here would I make my second choice. <clears throat> would she were buried. From out her grave this marigold should grow, which in my nuptials I would wear with pride. Die shall she. I have doomed her destiny. Tis news, Master Arthur, to see you in such a place. How doth your wife? Mm, faith, Mistress Mary, at the point of death and long she cannot live, she shall not live, to trouble me in this my second choice. Enter Aminadab with a bill and headpiece. I pray forbear, sir, for here comes my love. Good sir, for this time leave me. By this kiss you cannot ask the question at my hands. I will deny you. Pray you, get you gone. Farewell, sweet Mistress Mary. Exit Arthur. Sweet adieu. Stand to me, Bill, and headpiece, sit thou close. I hear my love, my wench, my duck, my dear, is sought by many suitors. But with this I'll keep the door, and enter he that dare. Virga, be gone! Thy twigs I'll turn to steel. These fingers that were expert in the jerk, instead of lashing of the trembling bodex, must learn tash and knock and beat, and maul cleave pates, and cupboards. He that enters here comes on to his death. Mors mortis he shall taste. He hides himself. 
Alas, poor fool, the pedant's mad for love, thinks me more mad than I would marry him. He's come to watch me with a rusty bill, to keep my friends away by force of arms. I will not see him, but stand still aside, and here observe him what he means to do. And Mary retires. Oh, oh, arm, that he that loves her best durst offer, but to touch her in this place. Periovem et unanem hoc shall pash his coxcomb, such a knock as that his soul his course shall take to limbo and Avernus lake. In vain I watch this dark hall. Would any living durst my manhood try and offer to come up the stairs this way? Oh, we should see you make a goodly fray. The wench I here watch with my bill, a mo, a mas, a maui still. Qui audit, let him come the dare. Death, hell, and limbo be his share. Enter Bravo with his sword in his hand. Mistress Mary, never a post here, a, a bar of iron, it's which to try my sword. Ooh, having a few connection problems there. Um, uh, Elizabeth, could you try the uh, last line of that uh, uh, b again, please? We didn't get it. Are you the with us? Can you hear us? Ooh, very slow motion. Uh... Okay, now by my be. Oh, my connection's not very good. No, no, it's gone a bit, bit wrong. Um. Okay. Can you see me waving? I can see you waving. Yes, you seem to be back, back on strength. Um. Try that speech again. Where's Mistress Mary from the top? And let's uh, we'll go from there. Where's Mistress Mary? Never a post here. A bar of wine against which to try my sword. Now by my beard, a dainty piece of stick. Oh, Jove. What a qualm is this, I feel. Come hither, Mal. Is none here but we two? When didst thou see the starveling schoolmaster? That rabbit, that shrimp, that spindle shank, that wren, that sheep biter, that lean chitty face, that famine, that lean envy, that all bones, that bear anatomy, that jackalent, that ghost, that shadow, that a moon in the wane? I wail in woe, I plunge in pain. When next I find him here, I'll hang him up like a dried sausage in the chimney's top. That stockfish, that poor John, that gut of men. Oh, that I were at home again. When he comes next, turn him into the streets. Now, come, let's dance the shaking of the sheets. Exuant Mistress Mary and Brabo. Qui, qui, quad, hands, boisterous Bill. Come, gentle Rod, had not Grimalkin in stamped and stared, Aminadab had little cared. Or if instead of this brown bill I had kept my mistress Virga still, and he upon another's back, his points untrust, his breeches slack, my countenance he should not dash, for, for I am expert in the lash. But my sweet lass, my love doth fly, it shall make me by poison die. Perfidem, I will rid my life, either by poison, sword, or knife. Exit Aminadab. Okay, lots of things to try and figure out here. Um, because, in a sense, it's it's relatively straightforward in the sense that we've got uh, Mary, who is uh, entering some sort of uh, sex work here, being uh, guided by Splay, who is an experienced older sex worker. Um, hence the name. <laughs> um, and um, I'm not sure about the status of Brabo in this this context here, because he seems to be functioning both potentially as sort of 
um, servant, but also sort of pimp at the same time. I'm not quite sure whether at the end there, when he was saying that, it's it, whether he's in league with Mary at this point or whether that's... And he's just saying that stuff at the end about dancing the shaking of the sheets um, himself. You know, I'm, I'm slightly confused by his status by that, by that statement at the end there, because that sort of changes what i where i saw him at earlier um so yeah i'm i'm not sure sure how all of this scene functions uh lynn then aliki i think Raybo is one of her regular clients your venus i'm mars so mm. i i think he's just he's 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 one of her johns and and probably a, a something of a regular mm. uh so he he comes in to you know do business uh with, with her. So the shaking of the sheets. Hmm. I, let's go. I uh, a leaky. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not how I took it. I read it as payment in kind for his protection services. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I loved the, the little scene with, with Mistress Splay there. I, her advice that, that diamonds are a girl's best friend. Um, <laughs> very good. Yep. And it it's i mean i'm assuming that everything i read as rude is as rude as i read it in which yeah case. yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah absolutely um and actually uh, alexandra might be able to answer the, uh, this in terms of the uh, the puncto reverso in terms of uh, what particular sword stance that that uh, the, and whether it's uh, that would effectively uh, uh, be be used as a gestural uh, uh, action for him regarding his virility uh, not exactly. The punto reverso is a uh, is a point based move, as in it's it's in things like it's in weapons like rapier and small sword, um, and it's to do with attacking around the corner. So um, it's it's possibly more about being you know sneaky and attacking people in the side or in the back rather than being uh, an honest fighter and stabbing people in their in their uh, foreparts because it's you're you're opposite each other but you're going around mm -hmm. either around their parry or around their person. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynn. Yeah, I also just kind of want to flag up the kind of really dark moments in this scene where uh arthur's like okay i'm gonna i'm just i'm i am going to arrange my wife's demise because i'm tired of her and i want to get with this woman um mm -hmm. and then aminadab threatening suicide at the end like mm. Mm. and and the you know the the, the mary in, in a relatively brief series of exchanges here mary just deciding how to deal with each of them in in arthur's case of sort of going see you later uh and in aminadab's uh, case of going I'll just hide because I really don't want to deal with this guy because uh, he thinks he's in love with me and really don't have time for that 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 uh, right now. Uh, Aliki then Alan. So yeah, the the suicide was interesting. I sort of uh, I decided to read it as a joke in the sense that I don't think Aminadab is capable of doing violence to himself any more than to anybody else. Mm. Uh, which takes some of the sting out of it. But the character is, is quite cruelly treated. So we'll see. <laughs> yes, because, of course, he, he's he's there saying, I will fight anyone. And, of course, Bravo just turns up and going, rah, and he just goes, ah. <laughs> um, uh, So, yeah, so there's a certain hyperbole um, that's that's be coming out of that character and at that moment. And similar to a degree with Arthur, do we take Arthur's... I mean, honestly, f following on from some of the things Arthur said earlier, I, I wouldn't pull it past him um, to actually seriously be contemplating, uh, you know, at least thinking about murder. Um, but um, yeah, he's um, continuing to be a lovely chap, is Arthur. Lovely chap. Uh, Alan, then Alexandra. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm seeing Bravo as being effectively pimp, which wouldn't um, rule out him being personally involved with... Uh, the woman he's peddling. Um, I'm trying to remember, did we say whether this was an adult company or boys company play? Adult. Oh, right. Hmm. Uh, because an awful lot of the humour seems to be pretty close to the boys company type material. Hmm. You know, no no double entendre left on mind. Hmm. Um, and I can see that the actors would have had an awful lot of fun with this on stage. Yeah, no, this is the Earl of Worcester's servants of whom I know oh, right. nothing about. 
Um, I think they're more Tory than uh, touring than uh, than than uh, than than anything else. Um, but I could be wrong on that front. Freudian slip there, Rob. Yeah, I don't think they're Tory in that sense. Uh, <laughs> we're a little too early. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Fixation on whips. <laughs> uh, Alexandra, you were waving. Yes, I was waving because I think there's also uh, some, presumably, some comedy to be had in the um, misinterpretation of Mary's uh, uh, sort of profession or um, um, enthusiasm by Arthur, um, who thinks, you know, I've, I've declared my love and now I have to get rid of my wife so that I may marry this other girl. Um, without ever kind of discussing from him. He offers gifts, but he's not discussing price, so it seems like he has no idea what she does for a living. Um, whereas uh, Bravo left the room saying... Uh, he's been saying he's a, he's a badass and a fighter, um, and he leaves saying, um, I'll, uh, I will withdraw and draw on any he that dares cope with me. Um, so he's planning to be aggressive to the first fellow who comes in. Um, whether that's, I don't think, I don't know whether that's to protect Mary or whether that's just part of the, the deal, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, uh, uh, honey potting basically, mm. um, you know, we have a, we have a nice girl to bring them in and then I rob them blind. Mm. And yeah, and just following on that, that, that point of sort of discommunication between Arthur and Mary. I mean, uh, Arthur is talking about murdering his wife in an aside. Um, you know, Mary is saying, come here, sit next to me. What sort of, uh, you know, we uh, uh, a bargain can be made here. And of course, he talks about murdering her wife and immediately the, the thing that Mary says after that. So how's your wife? Um, <laughs> which I would have thought that's the kind of question that, uh, uh, that, that, that a professional wouldn't necessarily bring up. But um, um <laughs> I have no practical experience on this, so who knows? Uh, Bryony then Alan. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, so we're reading How a Man May Choose a Good Wife from a Bad. Mm -hmm. He's got this this lovely wife at home who is submissive to him, but intelligent and witty and absolutely prepared to bend over backwards to please him. And, and this is his choice now, is a prostitute. Not like that needed to be said. Nothing Absolutely. against prostitutes, but you know, in this situation, maybe not the best choice. Mm. Well, the nature of the choice may may become uh, more of an issue later on. Uh, uh, Alan, and then possibly a leaky. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the whole thing so far has been dysfunctional relationships, um, and I mean there are some resonances between Aminadab's behavior and Anselm's that we saw yesterday. You know, there's a somewhat ineffectual wooing. Um, whereas we got Arthur who is being portrayed as being quite cocksure. Um, but again, pretty ineffectual. Mm. Yes, there's something interesting about the way, you know, uh, you know, when he's talking about, I'll prove myself a man. And she goes, aren't, aren't you Arthur? Uh, Ma Master Arthur? And she goes, no, 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 just just Arthur. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, <laughs> he's not very good at that. Um, uh, anyway, any more for any more? Otherwise, we'll go into the next scene. Uh, uh, Elizabeth. Um, I was just wondering, like, are we are we? Are we are we laughing at this situation between Mary and Arthur, or are we finding it quite disconcerting? Because I was just thinking about like I just want to say I called it yesterday. I said that I think he's gonna want to kill her. He's gonna want to bump her off. Um, but I was just a bit worried that we're losing the comedy for the serious parts, the serious plot. Mm. It, it's a good question. I mean, they're, they're, they're serious for then and they're serious for now. I think we're taking mm. elements of this a lot more seriously than they might have done then. Uh, and, you know, some of these, these exclamations ne don't necessarily land. I don't know it, whether Arthur's aside about murdering his wife is supposed to land in the way that it sort of did in the room now. Uh, uh, then. Um, so there's sort of those sort of questions. I, I, I think 
the problem we identified last time was that reconciling the comedy with some of the text is quite difficult for us today. Um, and whether it lands as a comedy today is, is, is a big question. Um, so uh, anyway, let's find out if there's more comedy or more potential tragedy. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe it's a comedy where someone gets horribly murdered. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, we've occasionally had deaths in comedy, but very rarely. Uh, he usually turn out to be Satan. Uh, Act three, scene one. Uh, enter Mistress Arthur and Pipkin. Vera, whence are you your master? Faith, Mistress, when I last looked upon him. And when was that? When I beheld him. And when was that? Marry, when he was in my sight. Ah. And that was yesterday. Since when I saw not my master, nor looked on my master, nor beheld my master, nor had any sight of my master. Was he not at my father-in-law's? Yes, marry, was he. Didst thou not entreat him to come home? How should I, mistress? He came not there today. <sighs> Didst thou not say he was there? True, mistress, he was there. But I did not tell ye when. He hath been there diverse times, but not of late. About thy business. Here I'll sit and wait his coming home, though it be ne'er so late. Now once again go look him at the change, or at the church with Sir Aminadab. Tis told me they do often conference when that, when that is done, get you to school again. I had rather play the truant at home than go seek my master at school. Let me see, what age am I? Some four and twenty. And how have I profited? I was five years learning to crisscross, crisscross from great A, and five years longer coming to F. There I stuck some three years before I could come to Q. And so in process of time, I came to E per se, E, and com per se, and tittle. Then I got to A E I O U after to our father, and in the 16th year of my age and the 15th of my going to school, I am in good time to got into a noun. By the same token, there my hose went down. Then I got to a verb. There I began first to have a beard. Then I came to Iste, Ista, Istud. There my master whipped me till he fetched the blood, and so forth. So that now I am become the greatest scholar in the school, for I am bigger than two or three of them, but I'm <laughs> gone. Farewell, mistress. <laughs> okay, so we've got some nice biographical data on Pipkin. Pipkin's older than his master. <laughs> And he's being kept back in school. He's the he's the student who's always being kept back a year, um, forever and ever and ever and all. Um, uh, amen. Um, I love his progress through the alphabet. There's something really fascinating about that, um, though it's mixed in with uh, Latin stru uh, structure things as well. I think as well. Um, but yeah, going to nouns and verbs, and then he's got a beard. <laughs> it's just it's just it's delightful. Uh, a leaky than Alan. I'm pretty sure the Latin contains an exposing himself joke. Mm. <laughs> I stare, I star, I stood. Mm. Then my master whipped me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think there's a formatting thing on here that's there as well. I think some of this is in verse, not in prose. Um, so the, there might be some interesting uh, structure there with all the, the, all the potential rhymes that are going on. Uh, Alan. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure we can actually say that he's older than Arthur, uh, because Arthur is the comment we had from him was, "I am past twenty-one," hmm. um, and I don't think it was, and I'm twenty-one in a week. Uh, no, you know, so the we, well, I think one could play them as near contemporaries, possibly. Well, either way, they'd still be near contemporaries. I mean, yeah. it'd only be a couple of years different. Um, but yeah, I just I just like the idea that this idea of Pipkin is this thing, this tiny little, this boy, we're assuming it was a boy actor. <laughs> um, well, uh, whereas uh, actually, I'm now seeing someone who's uh, 
definitely um, uh, more rugby player at the moment. I, I, I think athletic scholarship is what they call it in the States, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Um, uh, but the, the other thing is, what is this scene for? I, I'm slightly confused because it, it doesn't structurally really achieve very much apart from to say Arthur's away. Well, we know that. We just have a scene with him. Um, and it doesn't serve a structural purpose of splitting scenes apart because nobody in the next scene exited the last scene. So, I, it, I mean, it's, it's, it, it doesn't add new information. It's rather fun and it sort of reiterates a few things. But I'm not sure if it's necessary, which is the first time we've seen uh, in this play so far. Uh, Bryony. I don't know. I think maybe tonally it might be necessary. We'll, we'll find out as we read on. But it's been very light and dark, this play, mm. where you've had moments of extreme darkness. Then there has been some comedy afterwards. So I just wonder if it is because we've just had the scene with Arthur saying that he's going to kill his wife, whether it's just to, to kind of lighten things back up a little bit. But... Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Or maybe just Pipkin wanted to do his monologue. Um, uh, uh, Alexandra. Yeah, I mean, there's there's every chance that this is, you know, to allow for someone who is doubling to change their costume or to cover the front of stage with uh, some sort of interaction while people are busy moving set behind them. Um, you know, it, it does feel like something that if it had a purpose, we don't necessarily need that mm -hmm. in, in a we wouldn't necessarily need it for that in, in a modern production. Um, but I think it would be sad to let it go um, without understanding why, mm -hmm. because um, it is another appearance of Mistress Arthur's. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and, you know, it's, at the moment, it just seems to remind us that she exists um, rather than do anything a bit more, more effective. Um, but also I wanted to point out, um, related to what you were saying about Pipkin, yeah, the idea now, thinking of him as, you know, this great big burly, uh, young, bearded young man um, who runs in when the other two little boy, in the previous scene, it really recolors the previous scene we've, we've seen him in school in, um, you know, where there are two little boys going, you're late, you're late, well, I've been working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely, he's a mature student. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I just, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really liking that. I'm, you're, you're absolutely right. I didn't take into account potential doubling. So, if, for example, Brabo is actually doubling as Fuller, then uh, that might actually be a very clear structural reason. So, actually, that's a really good point. Um, anyway, we should get on to that and discover what's going on with our favourite double act of, um, of. Of Anselm, Anselm and Fuller. So Act 3, Scene uh, 2, uh, running Scene 8, if you're going just with a running number. Um, uh, and, uh, enter Anselm and Fuller. Love, none at all. They will forswear themselves, and when you argue with them, with it, their replies are that Jove laughs at lovers' perjuries. You told me of a jest concerning that. Uh, I prithee, let me hear it. That thou shalt. My mistress, in a humour, had protested that above all the world she loved me best, saying with suitors she was oft molested, and she had lodged her heart within my breast, and swear but me, both by her mask and fan, she never would so much as name a man. Not name a man, quoth I, yet be advised, not love a man but me, let it be so. You shall not think, quoth she, my thoughts disguised in flattering language or dissembling show. I say again, and I know what I do, I will not name a man alive but you. Into her house I came at unaware, her back was to me, and I was not seen. I stole behind her till I had her fair, then with my hands I closed both her e'en. She, blinded thus, beginneth to bethink her, which of her loves it was that did hoodwink her. First she began to guess and name a man that I well knew, but she had known far better. The next I never did suspect till then, still of my name I could not hear a letter. Then, mad, she did name Robin, and then James, till she had reckoned upon some twenty names. At length, when she had counted up a score, as one among the rest, she hit on me. I asked her if she could not reckon more, and plucked away my hands to let her see. 
but when she looked back and saw me behind her, she blushed, blushed and asked if it were I did blind her. And since I swear, both by her mask and fan, to trust no she-tongue that can name a man. Your great oath has some exceptions but to our former purpose. Yon is Mistress Arthur. We will attempt another kind of wooing and make her hate her husband if we can. But not a word of passion or of love. Have at her now to try her patience. Enter Mistress Arthur. God save you, Mistress. You are welcome, sir. I pray you, where's your husband? N not with him. Who? Master Arthur? Him? I saw even now at Mistress Mary's, the brave courtesans. Wrong not my husband's reputation so. I neither can nor will believe you, sir. Poor gentlewoman, how much I pity you. Your husband is become her only guest. He lodges there and daily diets there. He riots, rebels, and doth all things. Nay, he is the master of misrule. He is held the master of misrule amongst a most loathed and abhorred crew. And can you, being a woman, suffer this? Sir, sir, I understand you well enough. Admit my husband doth frequent that house of such dishonest usage. I suppose he doth it but in zeal to bring them home by his good counsel from that course of sin. And like a Christian, seeing them astray in the broad path that to damnation leads, he uses thither by to direct their feet into the narrow way that guides to heaven. Was ever woman gold so palpably? But Mistress Arthur, think you as you say? Sir, what I think, I think, and what I say, I would, I could enjoin you to believe. Faith, Mistress Arthur, I'm sorry for you. And in good sooth, I wish it lay in me to remedy the least part of these wrongs your unkind husband daily proffers you. You are deceived. He is not unkind. Although he bear an outward face of hate, his heart and soul are both assured mine. Bye, Mistress Arthur, take a better spirit. Be not so timorous to rehearse your wrongs. I say, your husband haunts bad company, swaggerers, cheaters, wanton courtesans. There he defiles his body, stains his soul, consumes his wealth, undoes himself and you, in danger of diseases, whose vile names are not for any honest mouths to speak, nor any chaste ears to receive and hear. Oh, he will bring that face admired for beauty to be more loathed than the leprous skin. Diverse yourself now while the crowds grow black. Prepare yourself for shelter in the storm. Abandon his most loathed fellowship. You are young, mistress. Will you do to youth? Tempt no more, devil. Thy, deform thy deformity hath changed itself into an angel's shape. But yet I know thee by thy course of speech. Thou gettest an apple to betray poor Eve, whose outside bears a show of pleasant fruit. But the vile branch on which this apple grew was that which drew poor Eve from paradise. Thy siren song could make me drown myself but I am tied into the mast of truth. Admit my husband, be inclined to vice. My virtues may in time recall him home, but if we both should desperate run to sin, we should abide certain destruction. But he is like one that over a sweet face puts a deformed wizard, for his soul is free from any such intents of ill. Only to try my patience, he puts on an ugly shape of black intemperance. Therefore, this blot of shame which he now wears, I will with my prayer, I, I with my prayers will purge, wash with my tears. Exit Mistress Arthur into denial. Bulla? Anselm. How like thou this? As schoolboys jerks, apes whips, as lions cocks, as furies do fasting days and devils crosses, as maids to have their marriage days put off, I like it as the thing I most do loathe. What wilt thou do? For shame persist no more in this extremity of frivolous love. I see my doctrine moves no precise ears, but such as are professed in amoratus. Oh, I shall die. Tush. I live to laugh a little. 
Here's the best subject that thy love affords. Listen a while and hear this. Ho, boy, speak! Enter Aminadab. As in present thou loathest the gift I sent thee, no look loose tarry, but die for the beauteous Mary. Fain would I die by a sword, but what sword shall I die by? Oh, or by a stone? What stone? No loose lapis yacket he be. Knive I have none to sheathe in my breast, or, or empty my full veins. There's no wall or post which I can soil with my bruised brains. First will I therefore say two or three creeds and Ave Marys, and after go buy a poison at the apothecaries. I prithee, Anselm, but observe this fellow. Dost not hear him? He would die for love. That misshaped love thou wouldst condemn in him, I see in thee. I prithee, note him well. Were I sure not that I was such a lover, I should be with myself quite out of love. I prithee, let's persuade him still to live. That were a dangerous case. Perhaps the fellow in desperation would, to soothe us up, promise repentant recantation, and after fall into that desperate course, both which I will prevent with policy. Oh, death, come with thy tart. Come, death, when I bid thee. Mors! Wenny! Wenny, Mors! And from this misery rid me. She whom I loved, whom I loved, even she, my, my sweet pretty Mary, doth but flout and mock and jest and dissimulary. I'll fit him finely. In this paper is the juice of mandrake by a doctor made to cast a man whose leg should be cut off into a deep, a cold, a senseless sleep of such approved operation that whoso takes it is for twice twelve hours breathless and to all men's judgments past all sense. This will I give the pedant but in sport, for when tis known to take effect in him, the world will but esteem it as a jest. Besides, it may be a means to save his life, for being not perfect poison, as it seems his meaning is, some covetous slave for coin will sell it him, though it be held by law to be no better than flat felony. Uphold the jest. But he hath spied us. Peace. Gentles, God save you. Here is a man I have noted oft, most learned in physic. One man he helped of the cough, another he held of healed of the physic, and I will board him thus. Uh, salve, ho, salve, magister! Gratus mihi ad venis quid mecum vis? O patus venis paucis tevolo? Si quid industria nostra tibi faciet dic queso. Attend me, sir. I have a, a simple house, but as learned Diogenes saith in his epistle to Tertullian, it is extremely troubled with great rats. I, I have no muspus, nor grey-eyed cat to hunt them out. Oh, could your learned art show me a means how I might poison them? Uh, tuus dumus suus, sir amidantab. With all my heart, I am no rat catcher, but if you need a poison, here is that. We'll pepper both your dogs and rats and cats. Nay, spare your purse. I give this in good will, and as it proves, I pray you send to me and let me know. Would you aught else with me? Uh, minime quidem. Here's that you say will take them. A thousand thanks, sweet sir. I say to you, as Tully in his Aesop's fables said, Ago tibi gratias. So farewell. Wale. And exit Aminadab. Adieu. Come, now, let us go. I long to see what the event of this new jest will be. And enter young Arthur. Good morrow, gentlemen. Uh, saw you not this way as you were walking, Sir Aminadab. Master Arthur, as I take it. Sir, the same. Sir, I desire your most familiar love. Would I could bid myself unto your house? For I have wished for your acquaintance long. 
Sweet master Anselm, I desire yours too. W will you come dine with me at home tomorrow? You shall be welcome, I assure you. I fear, sir, I shall prove too bold a guest. You shall be welcome if you bring your friend. <laughs> Oh, Lord, sir, we shall be too troublesome. Nay, now I will enforce a promise from you. Shall I expect you? Yes, with all my heart. A thousand. A thousand thanks. Yonder's the schoolmaster. So, till tomorrow, twenty times, farewell. I double all your farewells twentyfold. Oh, this acquaintance was well scraped of me. By this, my love, tomorrow I shall see. Exuant Anselm and Fuller enter Aminadab. This poison shall by force expel Amorim, love, inferno, hell. Per hoc venevum ego I, for my sweet lovely lass, will die. What do I hear of poison? Which sweet means must make me a brave frolic widower? It seems the doting fool being forlorn hath got some compound mixture in despair to end his desperate fortunes and his life. I'll get it from him, and with this make way to my wife's night and to my love's fair day. In nomine domini, Friends, farewell. I know death comes. Here's such a smell. Pater et mater, father and mother, frater et soror, sister and brother, my sweet Mary. Not these drugs do send me to in the infernal bugs, but thy unkindness. So, and you, Hobgoblins, now I come to you. Old man, I say, what will the madman do? And he takes away the supposed poison. Aye, have I got thee? Thou shalt go with me. No more of that, Sir Minadab. Destroy yourself? If I but hear hereafter, you practice such revenge upon yourself, all your friends shall know that for a wench... <gasps> A poultry wench, you would have killed yourself. Paki, quite so. Do not name this friend deed of mine. For shame, my sweet magister, not a word. I'll, I'll neither drown me in a ford nor, nor give my neck such a scope to embrace it with a hempen rope. I'll, I'll die no way till nature will me and death come with his dart and kill me. If what has passed you will conceal. And nothing to the world reveal? Nay, as, as Quintilian said of you, I'll strive to kill myself no more. On that condition, I'll conceal this deed. Tomorrow, pray, come and dine with me, for I have many strangers, amongst the rest, some are desirous of your company. You will not fail me. No, in, in sooth, I, I'll try the sharpness of my tooth. Instead of poison, I will eat rabbits, capons, and such meat. And so, as Pythagoras says, with wholesome fare, prolong my days. But, but sir, will Mistress Maul be there? She shall. She shall, man, never fear. Then my spirit becomes stronger, and I will live and stretch longer. For of it said, and did not lie, that poisoned men do often die. Poison henceforth I'll not eat whilst I can other victuals get. Tomorrow, if you make a feast, be sure, sir, I will be your guest. But keep my counsel while it too. And, and till tomorrow, sir, and you at your table, I will prove if I can eat away, my love. Exit hmm. a minute, Ab. Oh, I am glad I have thee now devise a way how to bestow it cunningly. It shall be thus. Tomorrow I'll pretend a reconcilement twixt my wife and me, and to that end I will invite thus many. First, Justice Reason, as the chief man there, my father, Arthur, old Lucem, young Lucem, Master Fuller, and Master Anselm, I have been already. Then I will have my lovely Mary to be it but to spite my wife before she die, for die she shall before tomorrow night. The operation of this poison is not suddenly to kill. They that 
take it all in the sleep, and then tis past recure. And this will I put in her cup tomorrow. Enter Pipkin running uh, and currently muted. This tis to have such a master. I have sought him at the change, at the school, at every place, but I can find him nowhere. Oh, cry mercy! My mistress would entreat you to come home. I cannot come tonight. Some urgent business with all this night. Employ me otherwise. I believe my mistress would con you as much thank to do that business at home as abroad. <laughs> Here, take my purse and uh, bid my wife provide good cheer against tomorrow. There will be two or three strangers of my late acquaintance. Uh, Sirrah, go you to Justice Reason's house. Invite him first with all solemnity. Go to my father's, my father-in-law's. Here, take this note. The rest that come, I will invite myself. About it, with what quick dispatch thou canst. I warrant you, master, I'll dispatch this business with more honesty than you'll dispatch yours. Mm -hmm. But, master, will the gentlewoman be there? What? <clears throat> what gentlewoman? The gentlewoman of the old house. That is as well known by the colour she lays on her cheeks as an alehouse by the painting is laid on his lattice. She that is, like homo, common to all men. She that is beholden to no trade but lives of herself. Sirrah, be gone, or I will send you hence. I'll go. But by this hand, I'll tell my mistress as soon as I come home that Mistress Lightheels comes to dinner tomorrow. Exit Pipkin. Sweet Mistress Mary, I'll invite myself, and there I'll frolic, sup and spend the night. My plot is current. Here it is in my hand, will make me happy in my second choice. And I may freely challenge as mine own what I am now enforced to seek by stealth. Love is not much unlike ambition, for in them both all lets must be removed, twixt every crown and him that would aspire, and he that will attempt to win the same must plunge up to the depths or head and ears and hazard drowning in that purple sea so he that loves must needs through blood and fire and do all things to compass his desire exit um yes okay so quite a lot went on there um so uh aminadab's uh comedy uh gyrations about suicide uh, were plot driven uh, and very comedic in the sense that we've got a really interesting selection of verse styles going on here and rhyming uh, couplets and all the rest of it. Um, it's very difficult to even attempt to make any of that serious, um, even though it's very serious stuff because he's talking about uh, suicide. Um, but Fuller uh, just goes, oh, no, it's all right. I just happen to have on me some uh, of that useful early modern sleeping draft slash uh, like death, not really poison stuff. So that goes to uh, Aminadab. But Arthur, who's thinking of murdering his wife, oh, just happens to wander by and go, ah, I'll have that and I'll give that to my wife. Uh, can we see where this is going yet? Um, possibly not. Uh, but possibly yes. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, and everybody's invited to the party of death, including his... <laughs> in theory mistress now that's a seriously dick move i'm sorry this is one thing to murder your wife it is another <laughs> thing to parade your supposed mistress in front of her as you're trying to kill her i mean that's serious you know just in basic etiquette of murder you don't do that um briny then <laughs> alexandra then lynn but he needs a date for this party and if he knows that his <laughs> wife's one. gonna be you know otherwise indisposed he's just really setting himself up there i think mm. um no, my question, he, he, he does, how, how does he know so much about this, this supposed poison? He hasn't asked anybody anything, and yet he's saying about how it's, well, it's the kind that makes you, it could be powdered glass for all he knows. What? what? It, it's, it's obviously on the label. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, that's whatever Fuller, wherever Fuller went to buy this stuff. I mean, 
<laughs> so many questions about that um because there's no setup for fuller having this apart from <laughs> fuller carrying around a sleeping draft that he can slip to he's got a bottle of mickey fins with him that's considering his line of um country here that's really wrong in other ways that have a really awful modern resonance um yeah, especially with his his delightful hoodwinking story that he told earlier, which was just, oh, what a card is fuller. Oh, I'll kill him now. Okay, Alexandra. Yeah, I, I also wanted to address the, uh, the mood uh, because it's something that we've been puzzling over for a while. And I think the issue, the reason we are having issues with this rather than just having a jolly romp about murder um, is uh, about potentially white wife murder uh, is that is that there are some things like fuller stuff that really hit us as yeah but in the modern day that's not funny anymore because um it brought to mind uh, I, I can't remember what it was earlier that it just sprang into my made it spring into my head there is a modern musical called a gentleman's guide to love and murder which is all about someone murdering their way to success and also seducing a couple of people and they are the core character that you're supposed to support and and have fun with but it's all constructed in that way and it's written it's a it's a modern piece of writing um so there's something to that. There is potentially, uh, you know, this is the early modern, um, have fun with people who are doing horribly, why don't we? Uh, who are doing horrible things. Um, but I don't know, on the other hand, because of how uh, Arthur has landed so far, um, whether we're supposed to take his you know, decisions, his actions seriously. I don't know about Fuller, whether he's supposed to be a comedic character and we're just taking him too seriously or, you know, so it's a very, um, I think that's the main difficulty I'm finding with this play is that it is both simultaneously really well written and hilarious and horrendously <laughs> contemporary and serious and yeah. Mm, yeah, it's it's it is a really uh, that that clash of 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 temporalities um, in terms of how you how you read it, because um, I don't think anyone's supposed to like Arthur. I mean, there's nothing odd, even in an early modern sense. I don't think anyone's supposed to like Fuller. I think you're supposed to think he's reprehensible, but he's a bit of a you know because the way he's set up to tell his story again, he's had two stories now where he gets to tell a hilarious story, neither of which land awfully well um, for us. Um, so he's he's supposed to be, I think, more charismatic and interesting, even though we also expect him probably to not end well. I expect him to not end well in a way that I'm I'm expecting Arthur to be redeemed. I don't expect Fuller to be redeemed um, in, in the same way. But we don't know until we get there. Uh, Lynn, then, Brani. Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, you know, I have said in the past that, that comedy is a structure, not a mood. Um, and this is certainly a kind of weird example of that claim. It's definitely a comedy shaped object mm. um, because we have um, a poison that's not really a poison that is additionally going to be taken by a person for whom it was not intended. That's a very, that's a very comedy type of complication. Um, near miss death which we we know is going to be okay because we know the poison's not really poison um but but yeah it's it, it yeah it's just it still is so uncomfortable and so and and so not funny at least for me because um because arthur really wants his wife dead and he really wants to marry his girlfriend um um yeah i mean you know humans desire what humans desire but still that's that's a tragedy not a comedy i don't know i mean that's that's the thing uh you know are we bad people for enjoying it um uh you know uh because uh, you know there, there is there is enjoyment to be had out of this um if if of course it all ends happily ever after and nobody dies um uh, but uh there, there are some really big problems with some of those characters um, as a worldview and how they're presented. And so, yeah, it's it's 
it's pulling it in all sorts of interesting directions that, yeah, not sure what to do with yet. Uh, Bryony. Yeah, so I might have been the only one in the room that actually enjoyed Fuller's little tale there. Um, and I think some someone said in the chat, I think it might have been Alexandra, that it came across like he's told this story so many times it's almost turned into a ballad and that's how it felt to yeah. read it. Um, and also, I don't know, to my modern ear, it kind of contrasted with this is going to sound really stupid but it made me think of um like songs like mambo number five or um love song for whoever where you've got and it and they're they're not the only ones there's there's probably loads of songs out there that have got just a list of female names in them um you know and so it i don't know somehow just the the contrast of that um and yeah I, i don't know i just i enjoyed it and i enjoy all of it i'm not yeah, I'm not really feeling too uncomfortable, um, but that's just fine. Mm. And yeah, and say weirdly, second uh, hoodwinking we've had this week. Uh, we had a hoodwinking in uh, in Timon, uh, though of course whether that comes out at the same time as this video is coming out, that that might be separated by a span of, of videos. But Timon, the comedy of Timon, is uh, has a hoodwinking that's uh, uh, a very different story to this one, um, and you see it live on stage. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, speaking of like trying to find the humour in some of these problematic threads, I found Aminadab's suicide quite disconcerting. I was like, because first of all, it's melodramatic, which made it a little bit funny, actually, because it was like, he jumped off the deep end. Mary hasn't married Arthur, so it's like, calm down. But then um, uh, the bit that I thought was really funny was the whole thing about the blindfolding. And Mary just listing all these men and just like having so many names of guys that she slept with um, before she eventually settled upon, I think it was Arthur's name. Um, yeah, I thought that was quite funny. Fuller. Fuller. Was that Fuller? Mm. Yeah, oh, I think before she way- found. Yeah, I, was, I, I didn't think he was talking about Mary. I thought he was just talking about one of his girlfriends and talking about why he thinks that women aren't worth it. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, funny. I mean the thing is, Aminadabs. It's just the way that the the verse is structured because it's very it's very short lines. It's very sing song. It's all rhyming verse. So it's it's all very silly. It's very hard to take this suicide uh, uh, in rhyming couplets uh, uh, seriously. Um, in that sense, I, I we could discuss this at great length further. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, so I need to move on to some more scenes. Uh, so uh, we'll get some more. Um, uh, act three, scene three, or running scene nine. Enter Mistress Arthur and her maid. Come, spread the table. Is the hall well rubbed? The cushions in the window neatly laid? The cupboard of plates set out? The casement stuck with rosemary and flowers? And the carpets brushed? I forsooth, mistress. Look to the kitchen maid and bid the cook take down the oven stone, lest the pies be burned. Here, take my keys and give him out more spice. Yes, forsooth, mistress. Where is that knave, Pipkin? Bid him spread the cloth. Fetch the clean diaper napkins from my chest. Set out the gilded salt and bid the fellow make himself handsome and get a clean band. Indeed, forsooth, mistress. He is such a sloven that nothing will sit handsome about him. He had a pound of soap to scour his face, and yet his brow looks like a chimney stock. Mm-hmm. He'll be a sloven still. Maid, take this apron and bring me one of linen. Quickly, maid. I go, forsooth. There was a curtsy. Let me see it again. Aye, that's well. Nah, exit maid. I fear my guests will come ere we be ready. What a spite this is. Mistress! What's the matter? Mistress, I pray take Pipkin from the fire. We cannot keep his fingers from the roast. Bid him come hither. What a maid is that? Fie, fie, never out of the kitchen. Still broiling by the fire. Enter Pipkin. I hope you will not take Pipkin from the fire till the broth be enough. Enter maid with an apron. Well, sirrah, get a napkin and a trencher and wait today. So, let me see my apron... Puts it on. Mm. Mistress, I can tell you one thing. My master's went will come home today to dinner. Enter Justice Reason and his man Hugh. She shall be welcome if she be his guest. But here some of our guests are come already. A chair for Justice Reason, Sarah. 
Good morning, Mistress Arthur. You are like a good housewife. At your request, I am come home. What? A chair? That's age six ease. Where is your husband, Mistress? What? A cushion too? I pray you, ease your tail, sir. Marry. And will, good fellow. Twenty thanks. Hugh and Pitkin converse apart. Master Hugh, as welcome as heart can tell or tongue can think. I thank you, Master Pipkin. I have got many a good dish of broth by your means. According to the ancient courtesy, you are welcome. According to the time and place, you are heartily welcome. When they are busied at the board, we will find ourselves busied in the buttery. And so, sweet you, according to our scholar's phrase, Quachulo adventum tuum. I will answer you with the like, sweet Pipkin. Gratias. As much grace as you will, but as little of it as you can, good Hugh. But here comes guests. Enter old Master Arthur and old Master Lucem. More stools and cushions for these gentlemen. What? Master Justice Reason, are you here? Who would have thought to have met you in this place? <laughs> what say mine eyes? Is Justice Reason here? Mountains may meet, and so I see may we. Well, when men meet, they meet. And when they part, they oft leave one another's company. So we, being met, are met. Truly you say true, and Master Justice Reason speaks but reason, to hear how wisely men of law will speak. Enter, mm -hmm. and this getting quite crowded, more talking to yourself is plausible. Enter Anselm and Fuller. Good morrow, gentlemen. What are you here? Good morrow, mistress. Good morrow, all. If I may be so bold in a strange place, I say good morrow, and as much to you. I pray, gentlemen, will you sit down? We have been young like you, and if you live unto our age, you will be old like us. Be ruled by reason. But who's here? Enter Aminadab. Salute omnes, and good day to all at once, as I may say. First, Master Justice, next old Arthur, that mm. gives me pension by the quarter. To my good mistress and the rest that are the founders of this feast, in speed brief, I, 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 I speak to omnes, <laughs> all that to their meat intend to fall. <laughs> oh, come, sir, Aminadab. Oh, my son hath profited exceeding well with you. Sit down, <laughs> sit down by Mistress Arthur's leave. Enter, even more confusingly, young Master Arthur, young Master Lucem. Oh, he's, he's, he's actually here, and Mistress Mary. Gentlemen, welcome all. Whilst I deliver the private welcome's wife, be it your charge to give this gentlewoman entertainment. Oh, sorry. Uh, husband, I will. Oh, this is she, usurps my precious interest of my husband's love. Though, as I am a woman, I could well thrust such a lewd companion, lewd companion out of doors. Yet, as I am a true, obedient wife, I'll kiss her feet to do my husband's will. You are entirely welcome, gentlewoman. Indeed, you are. Pray, do not doubt of it. I thank you, Mistress Arthur. Now, by my little honesty, it much repents me to wrong so chaste a woman. Gentles, put away your legs. First, Master Justice, here you shall sit. And here shall Mistress Mary sit by me? Yeah, pardon me, sir, she shall have my wife's place. Indeed, you shall, for he will have it so. If you will need, but I shall do you wrong to take your place. Aye, by my faith you should. That is no wrong which we impute no wrong. I pray you, sit. Gentlemen all, I pray you, seat yourselves. What, Sir Aminadab, I know where your heart is. Mum, not a word. Pax mobis, peace. <clears throat> Come, gentles, I'll be of this mess. So, who gives thanks? 
Sir, uh, that I, I, I will. I pray you to it, by and by. Where's Pipkin? Wait at the board. Let Master Season's man be had into the buttery. But first give him a napkin and a trencher. Well said, Hugh. Wait at your master's elbow. Now say grace. Gloria Deo, sirs, profake. Uh, attend me now whilst I say grace. For bread and salt, for grapes and malt, for flesh and fish and every dish, mutton and beef, for meats chief, for cow heels, chitterlings, tripes and souse, and other meat that's in the house, for racks, for bre for legs, for loins, for pies with, with raisins and with prawns, for fritters, pancakes, and for, for fries, for vents of pasties and minced pies, sheep's head and garlic, brawn and mustard, wafers, spiced cakes, tart and custard, for capons, rabbits, pigs, and geese, for apples, caraways, and cheese, for all these, and many more, benedicamus domino. Amen. Amen. I con you, thanks. But, Sir Aminadab, is that your scholar? Now, I promise you, he is a toward stripling of his age. Who? I, forsooth? Yes, indeed, forsooth. I am his scholar. I would you should well think I've profited under him too, you shall hear, if you oppose me. I pray you, let's hear him. Hook ades, Pipkin. Adsum. Quod casus sunt. How many cases are there? Marry, a great many. Well answered, a great many. There are six. Six, a great many, is well answered. And which be they? A bow case, a cap case, a comb case, a lute case, a fiddle case, and a candle case. I know them all. Again, well answered. Pray God my youngest son profit no worse. How many parsons are there? I'll tell you as many as I know, if you'll give me leave to reckon them. Uh, I pretty do. The parson of Fenchurch, the parson of Pancras, and the parson of... Well, sir, about your business. <clears throat> now will I temper the cup my loathed wife shall drink. And exit Arthur. We'll just briefly pause mid-scene because it's a long scene. Uh, Aminadab has presented us with an excellent grace we should all learn for, you know, occasional awkward situations you, you, where, where, where someone asks you, would you say grace? Well, that's the one they're going to get. Um, <laughs> the, 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 that's, that's, that's absolutely, that's a lovely one. I like that very much. Uh, all sorts of lovely domestic uh, details here. The, uh, M uh, Mistress Arthur is very keen on her maid doing proper curtsying. Um, that's a very nice little moment of going that 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 you call that a curtsy. Um, do it again. Thank you very much. There are guests coming. Come on, come on, come on. Best best service, please. Uh, and also just the fact you can't leave Pipkin alone near the food for any length of time because he's just going to sit there salivating. And then he gets together with Hugh, and it's like going, oh, there's rich pickings here, mate. No, it's fine. We're, we're you know, it, it's always good when they're having a, a dinner party because there's always some stuff left over. C come on, I'll show you the best place to sit. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's nice servant, servant banter stuff. And then, uh, yeah, obviously justice. Justice tautology. Um... <laughs> Just yeah. coming in and awkward small talk, and uh, Arthur has indeed brought his um, what he at least thinks of as his mistress uh, into the house. So awkward social occasion all round, as everybody's invited. Happy days. Thoughts on the room, uh, Lynn, then Alexandra. Yeah, there is there is sort of a little a nice little moment when Mary said, by my little honesty, I don't feel good about this, mm. you know? And and I think that you could take a moment in production to have those women like lock eyes and they have a moment where, you know, they, you, they sort of say, we don't blame each other. We're kind of stuck in this situation and neither of us is very happy ab about it. Uh, um, where you might expect a kind of cat fight, they have a sort of 
bonding moment where that we were, they were just like, yeah, we're both screwed. We're like, this sucks for both of us. Mm. And it's an interesting question. Is the justice uh, when he says, and here shall Mistress Mary sit by me, <laughs> is that him just going, I quite like the pretty wench sitting next to me? Or is he actually, is justice... Is Justice more intelligent than we keep giving him any reason for and just going, maybe I'll defuse the situation by by, <laughs> by running distraction with this. No, no, Arthur is not going to allow that to happen for a second. Um, yeah, constantly wonder whether Justice is just being polite and just has nothing actually to say or, or whether he's, he's, he's actually an idiot and, and drunk um, most of the time. Alexandra. Yeah, I wanted to point out similarly to Lynn that both of these women um, are kind of stuck in circumstances, um, but very kind to and about each other, which is really nice to see. Um, and uh, that, you know, even Mary being in the profession that she is, she's not a bad person. Um, everything we've seen of her so far has been really nicely uh, uh, presented and really nicely constructed. Um, I also wanted to draw attention to the, um, let me show off my the Latin skills of my pupil. He's terrible, so I'm going to fill in. You know, how many uh, uh, cases are there? Many. That's right, six. Yes, and, uh, six is many. many. Yeah. How many persons are there? Well, there's the parson of that place and the parson of that place of someone save me. <laughs> you know. So uh, yeah, I think again, it's so it's so beautifully structured, and it's all these small details um, that would be so much fun in a production. Mm. Uh, Alan, yeah, I, th I think Alexander has just pointed out that I I did the first edit on this piece. I'm darn sure that this "How many Parsons are there?" was from the original copy that I was working from, but persons would make an awful lot more sense. And we got Pipkin showing himself up as an idiot by coming out with the comedy answer. Mm, yeah, I, um, I'm, 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 I'm not sure uh, precisely what in, in, in Latin that's uh, supposed to be referring to. But it's, well, it's been um, the first person, second person, yeah. third person. Um, yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's presumably spelt that way just to make sure that they say it in a way that makes mm. the joke land, um, which... Uh, is, 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 it, is, is, yeah. it would it would still land, I think, if in a, a minute now I've clearly said persons and mm. Pipkin answers Parsons because mm. he because we we already know he's three bricks short of a picnic. Mm. Right. Uh, okay. We're mid scene. Let's go pick up the 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 pace and uh, get to the end of it. Because I say it's a, a I, I don't mean pick up the pace. Take whatever pace you like. Um, but yeah, the, pick up the action. That's what I meant to say. Exit Arthur. Mwahaha. <laughs> Ah, poison preparedness. Daughter, methinks you are exceeding sad. Faith, daughter, so thou art exceeding sad. Uh, Tis but my countenance, for my heart is merry. Mistress, were you as merry as you are welcome, you should not sit so sadly as you do. Tis but because I am seated in your place, which is frequented seldom with true mirth. The fault is neither in the place, nor me. How say you, lady, to him you last did lie by? <laughs> oh, this is no more bravo TV. I thank you, sir. Mistress, this draft shall be to him that loves both you and me. I know your meaning. Now to me, she have either love or charity. Here, Master Justice, this is to your grave years. A mournful draught, God what? Half wine, half tears. Come, my wench. Here, youngsters, to you all. You are silent. Here's that will make you talk. Wenches, me think you sit like Puritans. Never a jest abroad to make them laugh. Sir, since you move speech of a Puritan, if you will give me audience, I will tell ye as good a jest as ever you did here. Ah, jest! That's excellent! Beforehand, let's prepare ourselves to laugh. A jest is nothing, if it be not graced. Now, now, I pray you, when begins this jest? I came unto a Puritan to woo her, and roughly did salute her with a kiss. 
Away, quoth she, and rudely pushed me from her. Brother, by yea and nay, I like not this. And still with amorous talk she was saluted. My artless speech with scripture was confuted. Good, good indeed, the best that e'er I heard. I promise you it was exceeding good. Oft I frequented her abode by night, and courted her, and spake her wondrous fair, but ever somewhat did offend her sight, either my double ruff or my long hair. My scarf was vain, my garments hung too low, my Spanish shoe was cut too broad at toe. Yeah, <laughs> the best we ever heard! Best ever 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 heard. heard. I parted for that time and came again, seeming to be conformed in look and speech. My shoes were sharp-toed and my band was plain, close to my thigh my metamorphosed breech. My cloak was narrow-caped, my hair cut shorter. Off went my scarf, thus marched I to the porter. Ah, oh, never heard heard the 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 porter, spying me, did lead me in, where his fair mistress sat reading of a chapter. Peace to this house, quoth I, and those within, which holy speech with admiration wrapped her. As ever I spake and came her nigh, seeming divine, turned up the white of eye. So, so, what then? Forward, I pray, forward, sir. I spake divinely, and called her sister, and by this means we were acquainted well. By yea and nay I will, quoth I, and kissed her. She blushed and said that long-tongued men would tell. I swore to be as secret as the night, and said, on sooth, I would put out the light. In sooth he was a passing, passing jest. <laughs> oh, do not swear, quoth she, yet put it out, because I would not have you break your oath. I felt a bed there as I groped about. In troth, quoth I, here will we rest us both. Swear you in troth, quoth she, had you not sworn, I had not dunt, but took it in full scorn. Then you will come, quoth I, though I be loath. I'll come, quoth she, but be it to keep your oath. Tis very pretty, but now, when's the jest? Oh, forward to the jest, in any case. I would not for an angel lose the jest. Here's right the dunghill cock that finds a pearl. To talk of wit to these is as, is as a man should cast out jewels to herd a swine. Why, in the last words did consist the jest. I, in the last words, ha, 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 it was an excellent admired jest to them that understood it. And before young Ar Master Arthur comes on with the poison wine, um, th th there's, 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 there's a lot here that um, I, quite, I quite like the fact that Fuller tells a story and no one gets the punchline. Um, <laughs> and then he has to explain that was the punchline. Mm -hmm. um so i quite like because it's following from a moment of serious social awkwardness in the room the bit when uh when Ma uh, mistress uh arthur and maria talk to each other and suddenly the room gets very very serious and then they're sort of uh, oh let, 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 let's have a let's tell us let's have a let's change the mood and there's a sort of determined effort to change the mood and fuller doesn't quite perform <laughs> I mean, everyone's sort of going, oh, isn't this a funny story? But they don't get it. And they don't get the punchline. And the punchline doesn't land. And it's awful uh, in quite an interesting way. I quite like aw aw awful, awkward situations. Um, Bryony then Leaky. Yeah, I love that Lucem, old Lucem pretends to understand it as well. <laughs> mm. Oh, yes. Uh, the, for those who understood it, yes, like me. Mm, absolutely. Yes, definitely understood it. Mm, every word. Uh, Leaky. Um, it puts uh, an interesting spin on his previous uh, tales of misogynist hijinks, mm. I think. Yeah, that's all. Mm. Uh, yes, and it, it's, it's reminding me in place uh, of, of some, uh, some of the Jess books that we've worked on, though n as of yet we haven't, I haven't noticed anything that's explicitly a steal, but I could have missed. Uh, Brani? I also like how they all prepared to laugh at the start, because that's how I like to prepare myself for any comedy that I go and see. Just, mm. just practice some laughing beforehand. 
Yes, it, it's like after justice says, or justice nothing if it be not graced. Everyone has to do some forced laughing for a minute, and then he just goes, eh, now, now, <laughs> now tell the story. <laughs> we've done, we've got the laughing out of the way. Uh, we can move on. Uh, okay, uh, Alexandra, then we will move on. Just very briefly, it's becoming more and more structured. His storytelling, Fuller's storytelling, is becoming more and more structured. Now it's a call and response situation where the last verse is, is you know, encouragement from the other people. It's it's strange. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but it's doing a thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's see where this awkward social, <laughs> this dinner party goes. Uh, as enter young Master Arthur with two cups of wine. It was indeed, I must for fashion's sake, say as they say, but otherwise, oh God. Good Master Arthur, thanks to our good cheer. Gentlemen, welcome all. Now, hear me speak. One special cause that moved me led you, lead you hither is for an ancient grudge that hath long since continued twixt my modest wife and me. The wrongs that I have done her, I recant. In either hand, I hold a several cup. This is this in the right hand, wife. I drink to thee this in a left hand pledge me in this draught burying all former hatred so have to thee he drinks the welcomest pledge that yet i ever took for this wine poison or to taste like gall the honey sweet condition of your draught would make me drink it like nectar i will pledge you were it the last that ever i should drink Make that account. Thus, gentlemen, you see our late discord brought to a unity. Eke, quam bonum et quam jucundum est habitare fratres in nunum. My heart doth taste the sweetness of your pledge, and I am glad to see this sweet accord. Glad, quotha. There's not one amongst us, but may be exceeding glad. I, I am, I, marry, am I, that I am. Um. Oh, uh, young Lucem, who we haven't actually, uh, 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 I'll say, the best accord that could be tied their loves. Best <laughs> accord that could be tied my love. All are about to rise. Oh, what? Rising, gentles, keep your place. I will close up your stomachs with a grace. O Domine et care pater that gives us wine instead of water, and from the pond and river clear makes nappy ale and good March beer that sends us sundry sorts of meat and everything we drink or eat to maids, to wives, to boys, to men. Laus Deo Sancto. Amen. So much good do ye all, and gentlemen, accept your welcomes better than your cheer. Nay, so we do. I'll give you thanks for all. Come, Master Justice, you do walk our way, and Master Arthur, and old Hugh, your man, will be the first that will strain courtesy. God be with you all. Exuant old Arthur, old Lusum, and Justice Reason. Proximus ego sum, I'll be the next, and man you home. Uh, how say you, lady? I pray you do, good sir, Raminadab. Sir, if it be not too much trouble to you, let me entreat that kindness at your hands. Entreat? Fie, no, sweet lass, c c command, sick, so, nunc, and now take the upper hand. Exit Mistress Mary, escorted by Aminadab. Come, wife, this meeting was all for our sakes. I long to see the force my poison takes. My dear, dear husband, in exchange of hate, my love and heart shall on your service wait. Exuant Arthur, Mistress Arthur, and Pipkin. Show us my love on thee, but long no more to her rich love. Thy service is too poor. Shame, no more. 
You had best expostulate your love with every stranger. Leave these sighs and change them to familiar comfort. Oh, trust me, the virtues of young Arthur's wife, her constancy, modest humidity, her patience and admired temperance have made me love all womankind the better. Enter Pipkin. Oh, my mistress, my mistress! She's dead, she's gone, she's dead, she's gone! What's that he says? Out of my way, stand back, I say! All joy from earth has fled, she is this day as cold as clay. My mistress, she is dead. Oh, Lord, my mistress, my mistress! Exit Pipkin. What? Mistress Arthur dead? My soul is vanished, and the world's wonder from the world quite banished. Oh, I am sick. My grip pain grows worse and worse. I'm quite struck through with this late discourse. What? Faints thou, man? I'll lead thee hence for shame. Swoon at the tidings of a woman's death? Intolerable and beyond all thought. Come, my love's fool, give me thy hand to lead. This day one body and two hearts are dead. Exuant Anselm and uh, Fuller. But now she was as well as well might be, and on the sudden dead joy in excess have overrun her poor disturbed soul. I'll after and see how Master Arthur takes it. His former hate, far more suspicious, makes it. Exit. Lucum, detective. Enter Hugh, and after him Pipkin. <laughs> My master has left his gloves behind where he sat in his chair and had sent me to fetch them. It is such an old snudge he'll not lose the droppings of his nose. Oh, mistress! Oh, Hugh! Oh, Hugh! Oh, mistress! Hugh, I must needs beat thee! I am mad! I am lunatic! I must fall upon thee! My mistress is dead! Beats Hugh! Oh, Master Pipkin, what do you mean? What do you mean, Master Pipkin? Oh, you! Oh, mistress! Oh, mistress! Oh, you! Oh, Pipkin! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, Pipkin! Oh, you! I am mad! Bear with me! I cannot choose! Oh, death! Oh, mistress! Oh, mistress! Oh, death! Exit Pipkin. Death, quoth I, has almost made me dead with beating. Re-enter Justice Reason, Old Master Arthur, Old Master Lucum. I wonder why the knave, my man, stays thus and comes not back. See where the villain loiters. Re-enter Pipkin. Oh, Master Justice, Master Arthur, Master Lucem, wonder not why I thus blow and bluster. My mistress is dead. Dead <sighs> is my mistress. And therefore hang yourselves. Oh, my mistress, my mistress. Exit Pipkin. My son's wife dead. My daughter! Enter young Master Arthur, mourning. Mistress Arthur, here comes her husband. Oh, here the woeful husband comes alive. No husband now. The wife that did uphold that name of husband is now quite overthrown, and I am left a hapless widower. Then would I speak if grief would suffer me. As Master Arthur says, so say I. If grief would let me, I would weeping die. To be thus hapless in my aged years. Oh, I would speak, but my words melt to tears. Go in, go in, and view the sweetest corpse that e'er was laid upon a mournful room. You cannot speak for weeping sorrow's doom. Bad news are rife, good tidings seldom come. And exit Arthur. Um, so, uh, it, it, it's a bit of a sh uh, shame we, we cut off the uh, the, the last uh, unit of action before Justice said uh, their, their, their last lines, because um, uh, Justice sort of does the full stop on the, the Fuller's story of just, um, I said it was good for fashion's sake, but dear God, it was sh <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lovely so i i think justice is is only pretending to be um uh, <laughs> stupid stupid i think justice is actually a wily old, uh, old bird <laughs> um you know he deliberately don't doesn't want to give forth an opinion on anything because that doesn't pay the bills um you know 
keep it going, keep it turning over. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, Aminadab doing his um, closing grace. I didn't know you got closing graces. It's open, uh, an opening and a closing ceremony. Who knew? Um, and, um, yeah, and then, of course, we have uh, Pipkin beating the crap out of you in grief. Um <laughs> I think it's actually a quite a psychological reaction. I think that's sometimes, you know, you just go, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm hitting you, but I have to hit something. Um, I'm so sorry, Hugh. And Hugh is described as old Hugh. So it, is this another older retainer? I was, again, taking him to be a boy, but no, Hugh seems to be an older servant. So maybe he's beating the <laughs> an old man. <laughs> so, this is a really weird situation. I'm I'm liking it enormously, despite the many, many problems with it. Anyway, Bryony. Yeah, I love everything that just happened. Um, but what I wanted to say, I just particularly, absolutely love. Well, I, I loved all the old oh, mistress, old. Oh, yeah, I, I loved all of that bit. But that first bit where Pipkin tells everybody is just the, the words are just beautiful. The rhyming in it is just perfect. I really like it. The out of my way, stand back, I say bit is just fantastic. Mm. Yeah, there's some there's some lovely it's 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 as as a scene this is a beautifully structured piece of work because it's got sort of it's 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 like a little play in its own right. Um uh, uh, you know, it's a little perfectly thing. It's got a beginning, a middle and an end. It's got a little interlude of 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 one thing and uh, digressions to another. Uh we've got um uh the 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 the, the loving cu cup pledge um and mistress arthur getting the uh, the dramatic irony line of you know uh we're at the last that i should ever drink um and um and, and mary of course picking up a, a minidab on the way out just going well arthur's an, uh, a bust so uh hi person who um <laughs> i dismissed earlier uh following as splay said earlier follow the money um so yeah uh, Alexandra. Well, and also of all the people who have made a move towards her, towards Mary, Aminadab is the only one that hasn't proven himself a dangerous or horrible person uh, at this dinner party. You know, he's said grace twice and sort of uh, shown off that his student doesn't know Latin. Like, he's he's the most forgivable person there. Um, but also, I, I found it interesting how, um, you know, we were laughing at all this, oh, my mistress, oh, my this. And, you know, possibly it's it's written to be uh, treated hilariously. But what I was finding interesting is Pipkin is actually quite... Um, um, verbose isn't the word, quite... Um, he speaks quite well for the entire time until... Including knowing some Latin, until the point where he loses his ability to formulate sentences because of how distraught he is about his mistress's um, uh, death. And uh, as Bryony pointed out, he's got that sort of initial speech um, that is sort of his descent into that and then can barely string more than, a, oh, God, oh, mistress, oh, Hugh, which is... Um, I don't know. There's something very touching about it, or that could be very touching, as well as it's so easy to to make it ridiculous. I, mean, for the I, I think you're right. I think there is there are rooms, places where it flips. Um, I, I think when he starts beating Hugh, um, that there is a moment where I think Pipkin breaks uh, uh, in the, the the sort of clowning tradition because there is a moment where he goes, "Oh, Hugh, I am mad." Bear with me, I cannot choose. Oh, death! You know that it feel that feels like a clown break of 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 actually breaking character for a moment there, of just going uh, for for comic effect. Um, uh, it it may not be. Uh, it could be in, again entirely in character. Um, but uh, I'm just just my suspicion about the way clowns function. Uh, Aliki. Uh, I th I think you're you're both right, and I think it is quite moving. Uh, actually all of that oh oh and incoherence and the father's speech is too and it's good to know that she's loved after mm. we've seen her be so unloved mm. well i mean that's the thing is actually the only person in the place being horrible to her is her husband everyone else is actually uh, on the whole generally nice i mean uh, um you know sometimes not nice in a 
problematic way, but uh, you know, the the, the 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 in theory affection is is flowing in her direction. Um, yeah, or or being nice in an unhelpful way as her parent. <laughs> you know, by trying to take it to court and just going, no, I didn't ask you to do that. Please don't do that. Um, Elizabeth then, Bryony. Did anybody think that for 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 comic effect, Arthur might have poisoned the wrong drink? Because he comes on stage with two cups, and I was really hoping that he would drink from the wrong one. Mm. Yes, I mean, Alexandra put in the sort of actorly decision of, yes, yeah. this one. Uh, <laughs> <is for me. laughs> and I, I think you don't have to, it doesn't even have to be as big as a switch. It can just be a matter of just, yes, that one. Um, <laughs> that little moment can be had, and I think there's a lot of pleasure to be had out of that. Uh, Brownie. Yeah, the other thing I noticed was that the, the only time he can bring himself, force himself to to pretend to be nice and say something nice about his wife is after he has made this decision, you know, that I, he's, he's not only going to kill her, but how and when, you know, once once that's happened, he's like, yeah, I can, I can pretend I like you now, no problems. Mm. Yeah. Um... Okay, we are into extra time, so uh, time for overall general thoughts about the play so far. Uh, many of us have been here for for its entirety of the text. Uh, we we obviously have another uh, couple of acts to go. There is still some more uh, plot developments to occur. Um, but uh, yes, I'll uh, start with Lynn. Any final thoughts about the play for, so far? You know, not really. I I am still just really struggling with with where to have it i kind of feel like i should be enjoying it at least a, a little and 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 so far i I'm, I'm having just too much trouble engaging with it and accepting its terms of of play sorry that's okay uh it's a legitimate audience response of which we we you know ultimately if we pull it before an audience and if that's what we get then then you know that changes what one does with the text uh alan uh, any final thoughts yeah, I mean, it, it's working incredibly well. I mean, it, I must admit the thought, I know I've mentioned potential boys' company influences before, but I'm just wondering, given you said that this was primarily a touring company that we mm. think were involved with this, whether the, there is this is based on material that was current from maybe boys' companies that someone has picked up, done a cut-and-paste job on, and... Uh, which then touring around the provinces or whatever. I would have said that if it wasn't for the fact that almost all of the servants and the people we thought were supposed to be young uh, turn out <laughs> to be actually quite old. Mm. Um, you know, we don't actually have, you know, the boys uh, within this company are almost certainly playing all of the Mistress Arthur and uh, Mistress Mary, uh, and, and, and they're presumably also possibly doubling as, uh, as the two boys we meet earlier. Uh, I haven't looked to see how that actually functions. Um so no, I I I I don't see I don't see there's any particular structural need for it either. I mean the the act structure is is entirely artificial and later. It's not, it doesn't actually have an act structure. It's just that this edition had decided that it did. Um, but you know the original it's just broken up into scenes. So I don't know if there's any real evidence there that that that's the case. And uh, you know, just because you're a touring company doesn't mean you can't put commission plays. I wouldn't specifically commission a play that's going to be specifically good to tour with as well. I mean, repurposing something else which has a structure would be a bit of a problem, uh, potentially. Um, Aliki, you've only been here for this session. Any final thoughts? Um, I, I've really enjoyed it. I know there's a lot of misogyny in the premises and so on, but like that's Western culture until maybe 10 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> that that so, long ago? <laughs> you know, uh, I don't really, I'm not really seeing that. What I'm seeing is is the, the shallowness of Arthur and the, the puncturing of Fuller's great stories and the really vividly drawn Pippin. And I cannot get over Pippin, the boy who is 24 and a strapping lad. And I, I just... I see so much here. I really, really enjoying this. Mm. Yeah, I, I, and I think Pipkin's um, role because there was a scene which you weren't here for yesterday, where Pipkin, as I say, was in this 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 really rather funny uh, scene with Aminadab, um, uh, where he's trying to teach 
you know, and, and, you know, a boy saying he's lost his homework and then Pipkin turns up late. And of course, we were thinking that all the boys were the same age and it was all <laughs> thing. But now that we know what he looks like uh, and we keep getting descriptions of Pipkin, there, there was more description of what he was like as well um, when he was just, when they were talking about him in front of the fire um, and, uh, and things. So this, this is, you know, he's... Uh, He's he's dirty. His brow looks like the chimney stock. He's he's always un, you know he's he's uh, yeah he's 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 really well drawn. And I think that's what's saving a lot of this is actually that all of the characters are quite well drawn. They are believable people. They are functioning within a world that that has logic. It's not like they're crowbarring and making people do things for no readily apparent reason, um, which we've had with other plays recently. Where we're just going, why is this happening? Why why are you doing that? Why why would you do that? Why why just why? Um, Elizabeth, any final thoughts? Oh, have you frozen? Oh, no, you haven't. Yeah, um, just to say that we've got a definite shape to the text. Mm. There's a definite intention from the playwright. But I think the initial premise of a man hating his wife, who's actually quite nice and wanting to get rid of her, doesn't make for much humour. And I think that that's kind of a sticking point. Mm. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Alexandra, any final thoughts? Um, just to return to a, a thought that I expressed yesterday about how, very early yesterday, about how it feels like this play um, subverts or inverts a lot of Comedia dell'arte um, with, you know, the uh, the lovers who are not in love, they're, they're stuck together and actually they don't want to be in this marriage and the... Um, things like the two old men not being the the grumpy folk who impose their will. Um, we now have a subversion on Pipkin as well, right? If he's this great big ox of a, of a fella, um, as opposed to small, starving little boy servant. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I think, and also we're getting subversions in Fuller, in that, you know, even the, even the people in the play don't think his stories of abusing women are funny um and so on uh i think it's i think there's a lot in it that we as a modern audience res would respond to very well and i think also a lot of it that a contemporary audience would have sort of measured against what they were used to you know this is a wife who behaves like grizzled um but isn't kind of completely uh, um, flat and colorless whilst doing that. This is, uh, you know, a husband who who takes the um, that plot of of deciding to kill. He very swiftly decides to 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 murder her, and then very swiftly the means appear. Um, by way of him actually doing someone a very good deed, which is preventing uh, the, the teacher from committing suicide. So I feel like there are lots of layers in this that as a modern audience we would really relish if a production does uh, set us up for, you should be laughing now, you should take this seriously, you should laugh here, you should take this seriously, not in a prescriptive sense, but in terms of the show knowing what it wants to get out of you at what point and I feel then Lynn's kind of internal conundrum which is also mine would probably be relieved mm. uh, Bryony final thoughts yeah I'm absolutely loving it this play um, I think talking on what, what Alan was talking about to me how intelligently written this is I think it's somebody who has seen a lot of of the plays that are around at the time including the boys company plays and understood what works and what doesn't in them it is the first time a yesterday's session that i have ever seen that pedant schoolmaster latin trope actually land and work we've had more latin that lands and works today which you know we see latin all the time in these plays and quite often i just switch off to it because it never lands but it's it's worked in this so there is there's something really intelligent about this some of the some of the, the writing like i say pipkin 
um, some of his writing is brilliant. And, and like Leakey said, you can really see who this character is. Same as from straight out the gates yesterday, we knew who old Arthur and old Lusan were and what their whole shtick was. And it's fun and I'm really enjoying it. And I kind of, I do have quite a dark kind of sense of humor and dark dark tastes at times so i'm not really bothered by the discomfort of this which some people are are being bothered by um so i'm just <laughs> it, it leaves me free to just be able to really really enjoy it um whereas normally i'm trying to work out what the tone is and where what, what i feel about the play this one almost straight away it got me and i just i really like this one a lot it's a lot that could work in so Bryony is setting us up very nicely for uh, the curse of the final session um, <laughs> there um, where resolutions of uh, and, and developments in the plot uh, may or may not disappoint. Uh, we shall see uh, all that remains unless anyone has any additional thoughts they want to throw in all that remains. Thank you all our wonderful readers for their wonderful reading. Thank you very much and goodbye. I have no muspus.